10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, episode 162. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 162 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. If you're new to the show, my name is Nick Manella. Welcome in. I'm the creator and host of the show, and we will be guiding you through about a 10 minute jazz lesson here that is going to improve your playing and hopefully teach you something brand new. So this week again is our lick of the month, and I'm very excited to bring this one to you. This one features one of my favorite young saxophonists, and the stuff that she plays over the blues in this episode is going to kind of blow your mind, as it did mine. All right, a couple of items of housekeeping before we get into it. Remember, you can get the PDF to this episode and every single episode that we've ever done by visiting our Patreon page. Go to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, and click on one of the Patreon banners, and for only $3 a month, you can get your hands on an entire library of 162 different jazz lessons. And again, That's only $3 a month, and we really appreciate that. We've got over 200 people over there supporting the podcast, and if you choose to become one of the members, you are responsible for keeping this podcast coming at you week after week in high quality. I want to thank a couple of people for joining up this week. Thank you to Bill, Greg, and Bob. Thank you guys so much for joining the family, and we hope you're getting a lot out of your Patreon membership. Okay, let's get into today's episode. So if you don't know who Melissa Aldana is, you need to check her out immediately. She's a young saxophonist based in New York City, and her playing has really been catching my ear lately. She's just really pushing the boundaries of the instrument and of jazz in general, Um, and her output is just fantastic. It just brings a smile to my face every time I listen to her play the saxophone. So what I did was I transcribed one chorus of her solo on Billy's Bounce this week, and this is from a YouTube video of her with a particular quartet in New York, the Jochen Rukert Quartet. I will include a link to that video in the show notes if you want to go and check out the entire performance, which I highly suggest. But we're going to be looking at this one chorus that is just amazing, the way that Melissa uses the intervals and the rhythm and propels her solo forward in maybe the most effective way that I've heard in a long time. This is some really, really impressive stuff from Melissa. So let me play it for you first. As you guys know, I can't play the original recording. I don't own the copyright to that. So I'm going to do a poor impression on saxophone of what Melissa's playing. And I'm going to do it much, much, much slower so that you can kind of hear what's going on. So grab your PDF and listen first. And then we're going to talk about some of these things. Okay, whew, that is just awesome. It gets me every time I hear it, which is why I had to immediately transcribe it. And uh, wow, just awesome. All right, so we're going to be looking at a few micro topics and a few macro topics. Let's start with the micro topics. Let's look at the intervals that she uses. I think that that's the most interesting part of this. And you're going to notice that some of these notes, they don't technically fit with the chord that's happening underneath them, but that's okay. There's no law that says you have to play inside all the time. I think what really strikes me about this is hearing the intervals. So it's not about the individual notes. It almost doesn't even matter what the individual notes that she plays are over these particular chords it's the collection of wide intervals that she's using so starting on the first note 
we see a minor third, and then we go down a fourth, and then we go up a fifth, then we go down a sixth, up a sixth, then we go down a major seventh, then we go up a sixth, and then we go down a major seventh again, and then we go up a sixth. So you can see the sixth is the interval that she's using a lot here, but they're all very wide. They're all a fourth or wider. And I think that's what makes this really effective. If you can start to work some wide intervals into your playing, it just makes your sound a little bit more unpredictable. And in my mind, a little bit of unpredictability goes a long way because it keeps the listener, you know, enraptured with your playing going, what are they going to do next so melissa is a perfect example of that so we get through all these wide intervals these last for like the entire first seven bars of the blues now another thing to notice that's really important is they're all quarter notes they're all quarter notes throughout the first seven measures of the blues so then what she does which is really really genius is she takes one bar off in measure eight and then in measure nine, she starts playing all eighth notes. And let's look at what's going on in there. She's really outlining a lot of chords. Now she starts with some really wide intervals again. In measure nine, she's playing the interval of an octave, and then she jumps down, and then she plays the interval of a fourth, and then she starts outlining some chords here, which is really, really awesome. Now, the next thing that she does, she outlines a bunch of chords. Now, I'm going to be speaking in concert pitch, just so you know. I'm including a PDF in B-flat, concert pitch, and E-flat, so you can take this and play it. But I'm going to be speaking in concert pitch right now. So in the second half of bar nine, she outlines a B-flat minor chord, right? And then on the downbeat of measure 10, she outlines an F major chord. Then in the second half of measure 10, she outlines a B-flat minor chord again. And then there's a chromatic approach to the next measure in which she outlines again an F major triad. So again, it's not that she's thinking about reflecting the harmony that's going on behind her. She's thinking about other structures over that particular harmony. And these happen to be triads. And again, it's, it's a really cool technique to just think about playing different structures over the chords and almost sometimes maybe forgetting about the chords. Although I'm sure that she's not. She's just on a whole nother level. So she is hearing the interaction between the notes that she's playing and the harmony that's going on underneath. But you have to look at it from a certain angle because if you were to just look at it over the chords that are printed on the sheet, uh, you would be possibly perplexed by what's going on. So just understand that she's kind of working on a completely different level than most of us are. And I think she's thinking more about intervallic relationships and going in between a bunch of different keys to provide a very particular effect to her playing. Now, what can you get out of this? Because most of us are not at the level where we're really going to be able to take this and put it into our own playing because it's just so advanced, right? So let's talk about a couple of the more macro things that are happening in this that we can actually take with us and put into our playing regardless of what level we're at. So the first thing is the fact that she uses those quarter notes for the first seven measures just kind of flies in the face of what a lot of us think about, oh, well, we have to vary our rhythm, we have to use a lot of syncopation. Yes, that might be true, but do not be afraid to play something like plain old quarter notes and actually, this can be a fantastic exercise for you to figure out how to make plain old quarter notes sound very interesting. And how is she doing it? Well, she's using the intervallic relationships to make these quarter notes sound totally fresh and amazing while just playing the same rhythm over and over again. Now, the second thing is actually the intervals themselves. So I guarantee you, if a lot of us started to use wider intervals in our playing, we'd be playing much more interesting stuff at the end of the day. So how do you start to accomplish this? Well, well, my thing is to take a tune that you know really, really well, maybe like the blues, 
and go very, very slow. I'm talking about like the 60 to 80 range and just start to play some wider intervals, start to work them into your playing. The best way to think about this is to just start doing it and developing your own system for it. But it can't be going by fast because what's going to happen is all of your vocabulary that you just fall back on is not going to work anymore if you're starting to use these wider intervals. And we might do a couple of episodes on starting to work some wider intervals into your playing, but the real key is to just start doing it. It's gonna be awful at first, but then quickly it's going to start to make sense and you're gonna to start to be able to use some of that material in your own playing. So I think that those are a couple of things that even if you're like a beginner intermediate and you can't take any of this harmonic stuff to heart or any of the structure stuff, you can start to use those two things, her use of intervals, wide intervals, and her use of rhythm. It can make you completely rethink how you're doing things. Let's listen to that one more time. Okay, so hopefully this has made an impact on you. If anything, it's just one of the hippest things that I've heard in a long time. And we can at least just appreciate that there's somebody out there that's playing like this. So check out Melissa Aldana. Check out the video. You will definitely not be sorry. Um, she's just on the top of her game right now. One of the best out there. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Remember, you should definitely be looking at the PDF of this one. And uh, you can find that at Patreon, 10minutejazzlesson.com. Click on one of the Patreon banners and pledge your $3 a month. Thank you so much to the hundreds of people over there that are doing that already. Remember, if you have any questions about this episode, the best way to ask those questions is in the 10-Minute Jazz Lesson Community Facebook group, and you can find that on Facebook, obviously, and just ask to be a member. I will approve you, and we can have discussions and all that kind of stuff over there. All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.